Today it was really interesting to hear just this conversation of the difference between a Palestinian woman's experience and then maybe an Israeli member of Knesset's experience and how women are experiencing things in different ways and yet there's still things that are similar together. Statistics of the two last decades uh, is pretty depressing and shows that, uh, that there's a lot to be uh, done. So out of 1,168 peace agreements between 1990 and 2013, only 18% uh, made any reference to women and gender. From 1992 to 2011, fewer than 4% uh, of signatories to peace agreements and only 9% of peace negotiators were women. And when it comes to chief mediators, the figures are extremely low, so only 2% were women. So, so quite clearly, reality still offers a considerable scope for improvement, which is why, why we are here and why, why Sweden is pursuing the policy that, that we are pursuing. Um, and, and our um, starting point is that this needs to be done on all levels and all platforms and, and, and together uh, for, for uh, all of us. Um, nationally, we have an action plan uh, since 2006. We are now, we just adopted our third for the coming four years. Uh, and internationally, uh, our uh, aim is to make sure that this issue is always on the table um, again. Uh, While well, Article 17 of the Palestinian law, local council elections guarantees that women hold 20% of the seats in the local bodies. So we have a quota of 20%. So, but what is the reality right now is that in 2006 general elections, only 13% of the seats were for women. If you look at the cabinet, Palestinian cabinet, there is only three women ministers out of 21 seats. On average, Women make up an average of 16% of the top leadership in political factions of Fatah, the Popular Front of Liberation for of Palestine, and the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. So again, they only reach a certain level in decision making, but not the top positions. First, we should look into what is happening in Israel, in the house of the Israeli democracy. Let's start with having two Israeli parties uh, that are uh, not only that they are viable forces in the Knesset, they are the forces that everybody needs to cooperate with in order to have a, a coalition of some sorts, uh, that they do not allow uh, women participation in the work of the government uh, or our parliament, the Knesset. I'm speaking, of course, of two, about two ultra-orthodox parties. As we look at the work, working week today and the needs of the woman who also wants to raise a family, then we understand that this com combination is practically, you know, it cannot be happening. You either sacrifice one or another. Right now, in this current government, we are dealing with the, I think it's the um, least number of uh, female members of the, of the government uh, since you know, a few years. Although in Knesset, we're actually having the record uh, numbers of uh, now of uh, MKs, 34 out of 120, which is still very, very far from 50 uh, out of 120. Uh, the cooperation uh, with polit Palestinian politicians at all Today, it's almost non-existent, okay, to the degree that when I was invited by President Abbas to visit Ramallah three weeks ago, and I eventually went to visit him, there was a quite significant pressure on me not to do it. And I'm not saying, not saying that, you know, we did not do it, but people in my own party. 